Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jason Pikin, and what we're going to be explaining now are the chemical aspects of people that have digestive problems, and especially in the upper digestive tract. Typically, these are people that have symptoms of burping, belching, some type of heartburn, some type of acid reflux or GERD. And again, what I want to make the point of is that these this bit of information that I'm giving you, these really important pieces of information that I'm giving you, are here to help people become healthier. Because healthy people have a lot less problems. I'm not here to treat your acid reflux or your GERD as a disease. We're here to make you healthier. And I want you to understand two things. You want to learn why you have a problem in the first place rather than simply just treating the problem. And you want to understand some simple steps that you can take on your own to make yourself healthier. So in order to understand the chemistry aspects of treating acid reflux, then what you need to understand is first, you need to chew your food. Simple. Chewing your food not only is a mechanical benefit because you break the food into smaller parts, but there are enzymes in our saliva. Now, enzymes are chemical components that when they interact with our foods, they actually make the foods more digestible. They help them to break down. And the first enzymes that our foods are exposed to come from our saliva. So please chew your food for longer periods of time than you're doing them now. I bet you most people that are watching this video shovel down food every once in a while. If you happen to be a really slow eater, great, stick with it. And we'll go to the next thing. So next you have to understand that the quality of the foods that you put into your body also have a huge impact into how you're going to be feeling. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics on every single food and what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. I want you to try to use your common sense. And just about everybody that's smart enough to be watching these videos understands that there are foods that are good for you and foods that aren't. You could probably tell the difference between a Big Mac and a salad. Which one would be better for you? Sure, the salad. Now, could that salad affect some people and cause digestive problems? Yes, that's a whole other story. Yet, the first thing you have to understand is we have to start choosing quality foods. If you're eating fast food, if you're having high fats in your food, if you're having unnatural products in your food, uh, chemicals in your food, a lot of processed foods, those are going to be affecting your di ability to digest properly. So, First, we got to chew, interact with the enzymes. Then we have to actually put quality foods into our body. The best foods to choose from are natural proteins that either come from plant sources like beans if you're not sensitive to them, or animal sources like a grass-fed beef or an organic free-range chicken. There's lots of other choices, but animal proteins and vegetables are going to be two prime ones that I want you to focus on. So next, the biggest misconception that I try to help people with, understanding that it's not too much acid in your stomach. We actually need acid in our stomach in order to break down our foods. If you swallow a piece of steak or a piece of fish or even some vegetables and there's not enough acid there, you actually can't break that food down. You can't liquefy it and you won't be able to get any nutrients out of it. So that acid is called hydrochloric acid. Betaine hydrochloride is that stomach acid. And in order for you to have enough stomach acid, you really need two ingredients as a base. Now you need a lot of things to nourish your body, but these two ingredients are key factors in your ability to produce enough acid in your stomach. Those two ingredients are B12, vitamin B12 and zinc and specifically methylcobalamin, which is a form of vitamin B12 that is more natural, more easily absorbed, and it adds something called a methyl group, which helps in our body's ability to, to, to detox, amongst other things. So methylcobalamin and zinc. Now, if you have issues with stomach acidity, you actually might not be able to absorb zinc, even though it's needed to make that stomach acid. It's like a catch-22 loop. So look for zinc carnosine. It's zinc bound to an amino acid named L-carnosine. And those two ingredients alone, B12 and L-carnosine, can solve some people's issues. But let's go take a step back and get back to that, hey, I don't have too much acid in my stomach thing. 
People need to understand this. So in order to understand this, you have to understand also another mechanical aspect that I'll be mentioning when we discuss physical. It's called your lower esophageal sphincter. So when you have, I'm going to use my famous diagram here of the esophagus. So once you put food in your mouth, you swallow it, it goes down a tube called your esophagus into your stomach, which is shaped like this. And you can picture that sitting right here, the esophagus, the stomach. What we'll be talking about in the next video is the diaphragm, the muscle that separates those two, but let's stick with here first. So that sphincter, there's a sphincter, a one-way valve that separates the esophagus from the stomach. And that is called the lower esophageal sphincter. Think of your esophagus as a, a tube, just like this. And if that tube is closed, but it allows food to open it so it can pass through, that's good. If that tube is open and the sphincter is never closed, that's a problem because then food can pass through, but it can also reflux back. Or the acid that's supposed to be in your stomach, remember, can sit there, but it can also reflux back, especially when we're lying down or reclining. And that's where a lot of people get their acid reflux symptoms when they're laying down to bed at night. So we have to make sure we have enough acid in our stomach because if you have in general lower amounts of that acid on a chronic basis, what happens is that sphincter becomes weak. It becomes wimpy. Remember, it's a muscle and it needs exercise. So where does it get its exercise? It's from stimulation. It's stimulated by acid. So it's actually the process of reacidifying the stomach that will actually help many people with reflux. And I'm not going to ever speak about definites. These are trends in the vast majority of people that I see that have reflux symptoms. They need to normalize the stomach acidity rather than decrease the stomach acid altogether. So how does that conflict with what most people are doing? Most people are taking PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. These are medicines that reduce the acid in the stomach. And these things are great for actually taking away the symptoms at least about 40 to 50% of the time. Yet, we don't only want to address symptoms. We don't only want to feel better because taking these proton pump inhibitors or taking acid reducers on a regular basis destroy your ability to digest certain nutrients. Now, proteins need a lot of acidity in your stomach in order to be broken down. Minerals like calcium and magnesium and zinc need that acidity in your stomach in order to be digested properly. So if we're suppressing the acid in our stomach, we're actually winding up with certain nutrient deficiencies. Actually, enough acid in your stomach is also part of your immune system. You see, the most common way we get infections through our food is we swallow them and there's not enough acid to break down the bugs that we've swallowed that wound up contaminating our food. So if we don't have enough stomach acidity, we can wind up with nutrient deficiencies and increased rate of infections. So you got to be careful about taking these meds. I can't give you the advice to each individual your own. That's between you and your doctor, but I want you to become a more educated person so you know what questions to ask. If you don't feel like you're getting the right answers from your doctor, find another one that may give you the better answers. So here's the base information. So we want to chew our food, make sure we're having quality foods, make sure you have enough B12 and zinc so you can make that stomach acid. And if you have proper stomach acidity, that valve will stay closed and that could be the answer to everything. What else could happen is that we've had this problem for so long where we've been taking proton pump inhibitors or acid reducers for so long that we need some help, some extra help in digesting our foods. And a, a primary thing that we can do is actually taking enzymes if we've been lax on digesting our foods alone. So what enzymes are, digestive enzymes and betaine hydrochloride themselves. You can take betaine hydrochloride in a supplement. 
you can take supplements that contain digestive enzymes. Now I do a digestion diary video all about digestive enzymes, but what you have to understand with digestive enzymes is there are a lot of different brands, there are a lot of different types and blends, and they can all be beneficial depending on the person. So the best thing is to deal with a professional that understands how to pick the right enzyme for you, and that's really what I work on with people and hopefully you can find somebody near you to help, but if you want to experiment, what you want to look for is a broad spectrum digestion, digestive enzymes that will hit a lot of different types of digestion, that will have tons of different enzymes in it. What I use is um, Integrative Therapeutics Simulase. Integrative Therapeutics Simulase is the line that they make, and they make a lot of different enzymes they make ones specifically for people that know they have problems breaking down cruciferous vegetables like cabbage and broccoli and things like that. They make specific enzymes that help you break down gluten and dairy for people that know that they're sensitive to gluten and dairy. And they make some broad spectrum ones. There's not one brand I believe in. That's just one that I'm dealing with now that covers a lot of bases. And so if you take these digestive enzymes, they will actually ease the digestion of your stomach and make it easier for you to break down your foods. Hydrochloric acid is something that people read about also. If you haven't been producing the acid, you may benefit from taking this hydrochloric acid. Now, who's gonna benefit the most? The people that feel uncomfortable within five to 20 minutes after a meal, and they tend to find that they have discomfort with eating animal proteins and fats. Those are the people that may benefit from hydrochloric acid. And so if you have these digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid and the B12 and the zinc, you're gonna be doing better. There's one other thing, probiotics. Now probiotics don't always work necessarily right up in the gut. What probiotics are, are the good friendly bacteria that belong in our body. You see, we have this thing called our microbiome, which are, is basically the, the name for all the bugs, the, the bacteria, the, the yeast that live in and on our body. Some are found in the upper digestive tract, and if some pathogenic or non-friendly bacteria like an H. pylori you might have heard of become overgrown, well, then you can take some probiotics that can help to balance out because what we want is good guys, and we're going to have some bad guys, but we want them to be out of balance. We want many more good guys, friendly bacteria, than harmful bacteria. And if those ratios become out of balance, well then probiotics may help, all right? So I think that is a lot of information on your chemistry. What I'm gonna give you is one more piece of advice, a supplement that I often recommend to people. It's called Pepticade. Pepticade from Quality of Life Supplement Company, QOL. And what Pepticade is, is a blend of zinc, L-carnosine, zinc, carnosine because L-carnosine is an amino acid that attaches to the zinc molecule to make it better absorbed. And the zinc attached to the L-carnosine has a great benefit at reducing the symptoms of acid reflux without any other drugs. And it helps to normalize the stomach acidity rather than just taking away the acid altogether. So methylcobalamine, peptocade, some probiotics, Last one, L-glutamine. L-glutamine is an amino acid again. These are things that are parts of the proteins that we eat. But when we take certain amino acids in a higher doses and concentrated sources, they can have a lot of benefit for our body. So L-glutamine powder is something that you can use and you can put it in your water. I use Repairvite from Apex. Repairvite GT has an extra L-glutamine in it, and it's a blend of herbs and L-glutamine. Specifically, what L-glutamine does is it soothes and heals and helps to repair the gut. It's also good for building muscle as a side effect. So I hope that bit of information really helps you out. I'm gonna have a summary sheet that you can get right at the end of this video, and that's the chemistry of upper digestive problems. What we're gonna be going on to next is the physical side.